Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel. Myself, Dr. Amit Kumar Maheshwari. Today's topic is porphyria. So let's see the what are the learning objectives for today's. First, we will see definition that what is porphyria. Then we will see the classification of porphyria, how it is classified. Then we will see what are the biochemical bases of major signs and symptoms of porphyria. Then we will see the various types of porphyria with their major findings. Then we will see the lab diagnosis and treatment. And in the last, we will see the various multiple choice question asked in a entrance examination. So first, part. so porphyria is basically um, derived from the Greek word porphyra, which means purple in color. And porphyria is generally defined as a it is a rare rare type of inherited disorders which results from the deficiency of enzymes related to the heme synthesis which leads to the accumulation and increased which leads to the accumulation and increased excretion of porphyrins or porphyrin precursors like ALA delta amino levulinic acid and PBG that is porphobilinogen. So that is the definition of porphyria and majority of all the porphyrias are inherited as autosomal dominant except two that is congenital erythropoietic porphyria and amino levulinic acid dehydratase deficiency porphyria. These two are inherited as autosomal recessive. So that is the basic information regarding the Porphyria. Now let's see how this porphyria are. So basically this porphyria are classified into two broad categories that is hepatic porphyria and erythropoietic porphyria depending on the deficiency of enzymes. If enzyme deficiency is in erythro erythropoietic cells of bone marrow then it is classified into the erythropoietic porphyria. If enzyme is deficient in the hepatic system then it is classified into hepatic porphyria. So that is hepatic porphyria and erythropoietic porphyria. And in the, exa in the examples of hepatic porphyria are first one is the acute intermittent porphyria, second one is the porphyria cutanea tarda, third one is the hereditary coproporphyria, and the fourth fourth one is the porphyria variegata. And in the category of erythropoietic porphyria, there is the three example. First one is the congenital erythropoietic porphyria, second one is the protoporphyria and the third one is the X-linked sideroblastic anemia. So that is that is the classification of porphyria. Let's see that how this enzyme deficiency, uh, which enzyme deficiency will lead to the which type of porphyria. So basically this porphyria are of two types. One is the genetic and another is the acquired porphyria. Genetic porphyria basically occurs if there is a deficiency, if there is a complete or partial deficiency of enzymes related to the heme synthetic pathway while acquired porphyria occurs if there is a, any drug or toxins interfere with the heme synthetic pathway. So that is the basic difference between genetic and acquired porphyria. So that is the first step of heme synthesis is succinyl-CoA is get contains with the glycine with the help of one enzyme that is called as a ALA synthase enzyme. Now if there is a deficiency of this ALA synthase enzyme then it leads to sideroblastic anemia, X-linked sideroblastic anemia. It is not a porphyria but it, it is included in the it is included in the porphyria because this occurs due to the deficiency of ALA synthase uh, enzyme. So that is the first thing. Second thing is ALA synthase enzyme that leads to synthesis of delta amino levulinic acid. Now this delta amino levulinic acid is acted upon by another enzyme that is called as a delta amino levulinic acid dehydratase. And if there is a deficiency of this delta amino levulinic acid dehydratase, then it leads to the ALA dehydratase deficient porphyria. Which is also called as a those porphyria and it is the one of the very rare porphyria. It is included in the hepatic type of porphyria. So that is the second one. Now this amino levulinic acid dehydratase leads to synthesis of PBG that is porphobilinogen. 
and this porphyrinogen is acted upon by the uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase if there is a deficiency of this uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase then it leads to the acute intermittent porphyria so that is the most common acute porphyria that is acute intermittent porphyria and this uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase leads to synthesis of linear tetrapyrrole that is hydroxymethyl bilane fine so that is hydroxymethyl bilane now this hydroxymethyl bilane is acted upon by uroporphyrinogen p co-synthase now if there is a deficiency of this uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase then it leads to the congenital erythropoietic porphyria so that is the congenital erythropoietic porphyria that that occurs due to the deficiency of uroporph uro porphyrinogen p co-synthase now this uroporphyrinogen p co-synthase leads to synthesis of uroporphyrinogen 3 now this uroporphyrinogen 3 is acted upon by uroporphyrinogen d carboxylase and if there is a deficiency of this uroporphyrinogen d carboxylase then it leads to the porphyria cutanea tarda this porphyria cutanea tarda is the most common type of porphyria and it is also most common type of porphyria which is seen uh, in the patients who are suffering from hepatitis and hiv also now this uroporphyrinogen d carboxylase leads to synthesis of coproporphyrinogen 3 this coproporphyrinogen 3 is acted upon by coproporphyrinogen oxidase and if there is a deficiency of this coproporphyrinogen oxidase then it leads to the hereditary coproporphyria so that is the porphyria which occurs due to the deficiency of coproporphyrinogen oxidase now this coproporphyrinogen oxidase leads to synthesis of protoporphyrinogen 9 this protoporphyrinogen 9 is acted upon by protoporphyrinogen oxidase and if there is a deficiency of this protoporphyrinogen oxidase then it leads to the variegate porphyria and this protoporphyrinogen oxidase leads to synthesis of protoporphyrin and this protoporphyrin is acted upon by ferrogelatase enzyme and if there is a deficiency of this ferrogelatase enzyme then it leads to protoporphyria so that and in the last there is a synthesis of heme so this is how the deficiency of enzymes which is related to the heme synthesis pathway leads to different kinds of porphyria so this is we have seen how this porphyria occurs due to the deficiency of particular enzymes which is related to the heme synthesis what are the biochemical basis for the major sign and symptoms of porphyria now we have seen that there is a mutation a mutation of the enzymes related to the heme synthesis pathway if there is a accumulation of aln pbg if there is a mutation in the earlier enzymes so if there is a mutation in the earlier enzymes related to the heme synthesis pathway that leads to the accumulation of delta amino levulinic acid and porphyrinogen and this ala and porphyrinogen can lead to various neuropsychiatric sign and symptom it is uh, it is uh, said that ala can inhibit the atpase enzyme in the nervous tissues and due to that there is a appearance of various neuropsychiatric sign and symptoms neuropsychiatric sign and symptoms like anxiety convulsions hallucination nervousness so these are the various sign and symptoms which will be seen if there is a accumulation of ala and pbg now if there is a mutation in the distance mutation in the distance enzymes related to the heme synthetic pathway so that will lead to the accumulation of various porphyrinogens in the skin and tissues and on exposure to the uv light or sunlight this porphyrinogens are spontaneously oxidized into the porphyrins and that will lead to the photosensitivity so this is the biochemical basis of major sign and symptoms seen in porphyria so if there is a enzyme if there is a problem with the enzymes earlier enzymes that will lead to the neuropsychiatric sign and symptoms and if there is a problem uh, if the enzymes related to the synthesis of porphyrinogens so that will lead to the photosensitivity now let's see what are the various types of porphyria and what are the major findings 
So the first enzyme that is ALA synthase 2. So if there is a deficiency of ALA synthase 2, then it leads to the X-linked uh, sideroblastic anemia that we have already seen, and it is the erythropoietic uh, type of porphyria. The major signs and symptoms will be the anemia type, and in the lab finding, you can see that our HB and RBC counts are reduced. That is the first thing. Second enzyme is ALA dehydratase. And if there is a deficiency of this ALA dehydratase, then it leads to the ALA dehydratase deficiency porphyria, which is the hepatic one. And the major signs and symptoms will be the abdominal pain and neuropsychotic symptoms. As we have seen that if there is accumulation of ALA and PBJ, then it will lead to the neuropsychiatric sign and symptoms. And in the lab finding, there will be the increased level of urinary ALA. Now, Third enzyme is uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase, which is also called as a uh, porphobilinogen deaminase or hydroxymethylbilin synthase. If there is a deficiency of this enzyme, then it leads to the one of the most common acute type acute intermittent porphyria, which is included in the hepatic category. And again, as there is accumulation of ALA and PVG, then it will lead to the abdominal pain and neuropsychiatric symptoms. And there is a again there is, will be the increased ALA and PVG in the urine. So that is the lab finding. Now the fourth category is uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase. If there is a deficiency of this uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase then it will lead to the congenital erythropoietic porphyria and in this congenital erythropoietic porphyria as there is a accumulation of porphyrins. So there will be the photosensitive will be seen and there will be the accumulation of this porphyrins in the dental tissues will also seen so if there is a emission if you are uh, passing the ultraviolet uh, if, if you are passing the uh, if you are passing the light then there will be the red color fluorescent light will be seen in the teeth so that is called as a erythrodontia so that is that will be seen in congenital erythropoietic porphyria and the urine of this congenital erythropoietic porphyria is also uh, red in color while the urine of acute intermittent porphyria, freshly voided urine sample is uh, colorless, while in the case of congenital erythropoietic porphyria, it is, uh, it is red in color because there is an accumulation of porphyrin. And lab findings, there is an increased level of urinary, fecal and red cell uroporphyrin 1 level in the urine. And so that is the fourth. And the fifth type is, if there is a deficiency of uh, if there is a deficiency of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, and if there is a deficiency of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, then it leads to the most common type of porphyria, that is porphyria cutanea tarda. Again, it is the hepatic category, and as there is accumulation of porphyrins, then it leads to the photosensitivity. And in the urinary, there is increased level of uroporphyrin. If there is a six categories, if there is a deficiency of coproporphyrinogen oxidase, so again it, it leads to the hereditary coproporphyria, that is hepatic one. And as there is accumulation of ALA and PBG along with that uroporphyrin, so there will be the abdominal pain, photosensitivity, and neuropsychiatric symptoms will be seen. Seventh category is protoporphyrinogen oxidase that leads to the variegate porphyria. Again, it is the hepatic category, and again in the variegate porphyria, there is accumulation of uh, uroporphyrin as well as ALA and PBG in the urine. So there will be the photosensitivity, abdominal pain, and neuropsychiatric symptoms will be seen. And the last one is the if there is a deficiency of ferrochelates, then it will lead to the protoporphyria, that is erythropoietic protoporphyria, and it is the mo uh, most common type of porphyria which is seen in the children. And the main signs and symptoms will be the photosensitivity and there will be the increased level of fecal and RBC protoporphyrin. So this is the major finding seen in various type of porphyria. Now this is the various skin lesions, photosensitivity uh, blisters and fluorescent teeth while if you are passing the light then fluorescent teeth will be seen in the porphyria cutanea tarda. Now, how, how you can uh, do the diagnosis? The main uh, investigation that you can do in the patients of porphyria is uh, you can do with the help of spectrophotometry. If there is a presence of various photosensitivity, if there is a presence of, if the patient is coming with the photosensitivity, then you have to see the pl pl plasma level of porphyrins. If there is a presence of various neurovisceral uh, manifestation, then in that particular patient, you have to see the uh, spot urine sample for the presence of ALA and PBG. So that is how you can do the diagnosis. 
so with the help of spectrophotometry which is which will be very help in the detection of porphyrin and the porphyrin related precursor in the blood and urine and mind well you uh, there will be the fresh urine sample will be required for the diagnosis which should be a uh, container should be covered properly to protect against the direct sunlight so this is how you can diagnose the uh, cases of porphyria now let's see the treatment the treatment of porphyria is mainly symptomatic treatment of porphyria is mainly symptomatic and you have to uh, also you have to see that if there is a withdrawal of the various precipitating factors the main thing is uh, you have to avoid the drugs which can induce the cytochrome p450 like barbiturates that is the first thing you have to avoid such drugs second thing is you can uh, a patient coming with a photosensitivity you can uh, you can uh, very well you can very well use the various sunscreen lotions along with the beta carotene this beta carotene will reduce the free radicals it will damage the free radicals so it will protect against the photos it will pro uh, protect against the photosensitivity and the third thing is ingestion of the uh, ingestion of carbohydrates and administration of hematin it will repress the synthesis of ala synthase and delta amino levulinic acid synthase so that will also help in the relieving the uh, sign and symptoms of porphyria so this is how you can treat the patients of porphyria now let's see the various multiple choice question so the first question which was asked in aims may in uh, 2012 which of the following porphyrias doesn't present with the photosensitivity so which of the four of Porphyria doesn't present with the photosensitivity and the options are first one is the uroporphyrin decarboxylase, second one is the HMV synthase, third one is the protoporphyrinogen oxidase and the fourth one is the coproporphyrinogen oxidase. So we all know answer is HMV synthase because HMV synthase is uh, uh, that leads to the accumulation of ALA and PBG and ALA, ALA and PBG accumulation that is more related to the abdominal pain and neuropsychiatric symptoms. So, correct answer is HMB synthase. Yes. A boy with staining of teeth and raised coproporphyrin 1 levels and increased risk of photosensitivity. The enzyme deficient is first one is the uroporphyrinogen synthase, second one is the uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase, third one is the uroporphyrinogen carboxylase and the fourth one is the coproporphyrinogen oxidase so the correct answer is uroporphyrinogen 3 it is the basically case of congenital erythropoietic porphyria you can see that there is a, there was a staining of teeth that is erythrodontia and the raised level of coproporphyrin 1 level and it is also associated with photosensitivity so it is uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase congenital erythropoietic porphyria Third one is the porphyria which doesn't, doesn't show photosensitivity. So options are acute intermittent porphyria, erythropoietic porphyria, hereditary coproporphyria and the fourth one is the porphyria cutinea tarda. So the answer is acute intermittent porphyria. Acute intermittent porphyria was associated with abdominal pain and neuropsychiatric symptoms because there was an accumulation of ALA and so the answer is acute intermittent porphyria. Fourth one is the all of the following types of porphyria are autosomal dominant except. So we all know that all are autosomal dominant except two. So let's see the options that is acute intermittent porphyria, congenital erythropoietic porphyria, third one is the hereditary coproporphyria and the last one is the porphyria cutanea tarda. So the correct answer is Congenital erythropoietic porphyria. So congenital erythropoietic porphyria is inherited as an autosomal receptive. So that is congenital erythropoietic porphyria. So that was regarding the various multiple choice question. This was my reference. Hope you have hope you uh, like my video. Like, share, and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit.